I'll put a little bit of pressure on this. I got my gauge here on the port I use for the adding oil. So I'm going to test it up to around 50 pounds just to make sure I don't hear any whistling. Then if I don't, I'll move on to putting the dryer end over here. And we'll move on to testing the pressure for the system and putting it into a vacuum. Guys, we have a dryer all set in there. Kind of up at a little angle. Have cloths underneath it. Kind of clear the leaves out of the way a little bit. Turn the nitrogen on the red hose and I go ahead and braise it up too. I used to have long ears to sing in a rock band. used to stay out all night long. I used to drink myself silly, go driving for hours, but now I'm moving on. I've played a gig since summertime. Been two years since I've tasted wine. Other than Till my beer can was empty as my head. My good friend that beats you doesn't believe you. My good times let me down. Haven't smoked anything for three whole days. Maybe it's nothing, but it makes me amazed. And other than that, I'm feeling great. Other than that. Let me check the other side here. Part while it's pressure checking. Looks like we're going to hold. We started out just over 150 pounds. And we are just over 150 pounds. We have some cleaning to do because she is nasty. I'm going to vacuum out some of the big stuff, spray her down with coil cleaner, and clean it off. You guys got a stinky First mess here. Cleaner. I'm going to put some vibration pads on the corners, get it off the ground about an inch. So when I clean it off, we might gear down here I'll make sure it drains out the bottom really nice instead of clogging up with dirt because there's a lot of heavy dirt inside of there there's still some dirt inside of there I have to spray out but I got all the big chunks out of there my vacuum cleaner almost had an aneurysm but I'm gonna go ahead and get it propped up with these and we can get it cleaned up got a lot of grungy crap on here I'm just gonna go over the dirt one time let it funnel up real good around each side got to get some good foaming action here this is our brown coil cleaner stuff Ralph turned me on to a few years back see how good she does I'll let her foam up I'll get every side guys I'm letting the vacuum pull down a little bit extra time here I got down to below a thousand microns and I valved off the pump and after three minutes it still hadn't risen back up to a thousand microns which is better than Goodman's <laughs> standard for better or for worse, whatever that means to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it run for another few minutes and we should be good to go. We're already good to go, so we should be even more good to go. Better to go. Pumps back up above a thousand because I turned the valve back onto it and it kind of bounced back up. But we should be good. I'll be adding some 407C to the machine. I'll go check the door over there. 
see how much refrigerant we need. We'll fill it back up and then restart the unit. Guys, I'm adding some refrigerant to the system. Hear it moving around in there. Going in on the high side. Here's some of that oil moving around too. 407C. Basically very similar to R410A, except for this R134 in it too to bring the pressure down. It's a made in the USA too. National refrigerants. So I'm going to go ahead and get seven pounds in here. We'll go ahead and get the unit started and run tester and make sure everything is working all right and finish charging. I have my wireless focus transmitter and the sling psychometer head here set it up for wet bulb so it communicates with my meter. I'm going to put it on the return so I get a wet bulb so I can do my target superheat while I'm waiting for things to level out. Guys, I'm getting close to around 10 pounds of refrigerant in there. And in fact, I'm at 10 now, so I'm going to shut it off. So stabilize for a minute. R410A suction or R407C suction pressure is a little bit lower than normal or, or lower than R22 so we have 52 pounds right now we'll keep a tab on that see where it ends up here in about four or five minutes wet bulb is around 60 degrees going with our target superheat formula you know we're 60 times 3 wet bulb times 3 minus a constant of 80 minus the outdoor temperature which is 67 and divide that by 2 we come out to around 16, 17 degrees of target superheat. That's what we'll be shooting for. I'm going to continue to charge it up. As you see, at 50 pounds, we're right around 30 degrees, so a little bit below freezing. We're definitely cold inside, uh, down below 70. So we're going to be running a lower suction, so we're going to see if we can add a little bit more. Let's see where our superheat ends up. I'm going to let it run for a minute, see if our superheat tanks, because our airflow is low on this system as well. Our blower is maxed out. We just got old stuff, old coil. Old ductwork, everything old and bad. Just a familiar circumstance we're gonna make the best of. Guys, I had something I don't see every day. I was down here and I was about to start the unit up, or I did start the unit up, and I looked down on the dryer and I saw a little speck of something. And it was where that solder was at, and there was a little piece of ice. So I brushed it off of there. And I looked down there a few minutes later and it was there again. And I looked down real close and it was actually leaking. It didn't even show up on the vacuum, whether it showed up on the vacuum or something happened when I started the unit up. I don't know. But we have to repair that leak, because that's what I did now. Right there at the dryer. Really paranoia now, because I had a good pressure test, had a good vacuum, and we still had a little something happen afterwards. Sort of atypical. I'll show you where it was at. Right down here on the top of the dryer of all places, where it looked like it was good to go. It was leaking. I've sprayed it with bubbles now, and I have it under 200 pounds of pressure, so I'm going to let it sit for a little while. Um, it looks like I got it. I did a pretty heavy braze right there. Emphasis on the heavy braze. But luckily I could pump the system right down, weld this up, start the system right back up again. Like Ralph has said in his previous videos, um, the system degasses for a certain period of time after you pump it down. Therefore, you have a certain period of time when you can actually make repairs without pulling a vacuum. Whether or not you believe in this is another debate altogether, but I do. So that's what I'm going to do. Guys, I am heading home. I am picking up a check from my father's house. I did some work for him a little while back. And I am picking up some stuff at the post office, my mail for today, which is usually five or six uh, bills, and then one payment. Welcome to the world of small business. No, but I am done with that accumulator change with the surprise leak. That's sort of atypical. I'm going to be paranoid for like weeks now for some reason. When I was brazing it up, the solder was not running very smoothly. Maybe there was some other solder on the line or something on the line I didn't see or didn't clean off. So I don't know, but I, I re-soldered it. I pumped it down, re-soldered it, restarted it back up. Everything ran fine. We had a 200, 200 pound head and then a 55 pound suction. But on 407C, 55 pounds is actually above freezing. The target suction pressure would have been right in that area because our return air dry bulb was in the mid 60s. So not too bad, and she's up and running again. Hopefully she'll last a few more years before she dies or something else breaks on it. it just took a little bit longer than expected. I, I went ahead and took apart the entire unit, cleaned it, uh, the coil anyway, cleaned everything up. So it'll be a little bit more efficient and a lot more efficient now that it's not leaking.